What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned with this week's guest, Frankie James. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, I'm J.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist and host of Done Way Past Funny. This is part three of our three-part interview with the very funny and very talented actor and comedian, Frank James. Enjoy. How old are your kids? Actually, to be honest, I only have an adopted son. I don't have any natural kids of my own. Uh, what's the difference between a natural kid and an unnatural kid? Aren't all children unnatural? <laughs> no, I mean, I there's any... nothing natural about children. No. I'm sorry. None of my seed are walking around is what I'm saying. So oh. actually when I married my uh, wife. She already had uh, three adult daughters. So oh, okay. Just saying. Oh, okay. See, it's, but you've been with them long enough that you've paid for those. Those kids are paid off now. So they're yours, right? <laughs> How much did they pay off? But they're grown up. Yeah, they're home. Yes, they're grown up. They're out of the house. They're on their own. Yeah. They yeah, are. so they're yours. Okay. You've been there long enough. So yeah. All the adults with their own lives. They're, yeah, exactly. So, so what do they think of your comedy? Uh, they don't think I'm funny. <laughs> my wife says she hates my stuff. So, man. Oh. Now, were the kids not when when were how you said you said she had three daughters? How old yes. were they? How old how were old they when when you started dating? Oh, they were in their twenties. They were in their twenties when you started dating. Dating their mother. They were in their twenties. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. Oh, she had adult, that... daughters, adult daughters. When I, okay. when I, this is my uh, second wife. Okay, I was yeah. just curious because I, 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 this is just something. This is just for me. I always like to ask, find out about um, when kids are younger and they dance with their parents. You know, they stand on their feet and they dance. I don't know, you know what I'm talking about when they're yeah. too young they, and then they grow up dancing with you. And even yeah. though it's not real dancing, they're standing on your feet. And I was just wondering at what, how old were they when they were too grown to dance with you anymore? That's, uh, that's, well, that's I something I always like to Oh, I had that experience with my grandchildren now. Oh, okay. With all of them. And yeah, and they'd always do that. They'd always stand on my feet and I'd dance with them. And we'd have tickling matches and hug fests. I love them dearly. I still do. But, you know, they're all in college now and they don't have time for me so much so but when did they grow so, too old when did, when did they say like oh. pop pop what did they call you first of all what did they call you pop pop mr james uh um, no granddad no, no, I'm just kidding, granddad. granddad what did they say granddad i'm not dancing with you anymore you're embarrassing me i would say when they got 12 maybe when they were like 12. yeah they start as my my parents would tell me to start smelling their own piss. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't understand that. Like, what, what does that mean? You know what that means. So they're now sort of more independent and like, you know, granddad, we're fine. Go ahead, go be with my kids. I have my own friends now. So we play with our games. So now, it was the top of my head. My, top of my head. Oh. So you, your wife doesn't. Does your wife not think you're funny, or she just doesn't like? No, no she yeah, she thinks I'm amusing. She laughs at some of my jokes, not all of them. She laughs at some of my jokes. The and main, does she have a favorite comedian? Uh, she likes uh, hmm, Tony. You know Tony Woods, of course, my homie. I, I know Tony. Well, I know Tony Woods, but I've never heard him perform. I've only seen him at an open mic once. Oh wow! No, he's hilarious. You, oh, man, he is okay. You know, hilarious. I don't know how superstitious you are, um, okay. because you are the third person I've interviewed in three days who brought it, who's brought up Tony Woods. Okay, and I was at an open mic on Tuesday night where the comedian there brought up Tony Woods, and each time they're like dumbfounded that I'm like, no, I've really never seen any of this stuff. I no, I've only hmm. seen him at an open mic once. 
<laughs> I understand. Yeah, and uh, so it's like now, so now that he's been brought up so many times, am I like karmically obligated to watch him or something? <laughs> you know what they say? Uh, you no, know, because it's happening so frequently now. Mm -hmm. Maybe some. Maybe he owes me royalties now. I don't know. I tell you what, though. Um, normally, once a month. You know, he has a, a show at the Improv in D.C. Tony was in Friends. I've been there at least two times. He gave me some stage time. So I'm just saying, should come. One of those um, open mics with Tony was in Friends. It's really good. So and he's really funny. Trust me. And since you brought that up, my wife also likes uh, the juggler Kevin Lee. You know Kevin Lee, right? I don't know. Kevin Lee. Well, he's a comedian juggler. As a matter of fact, he was here last month, um, and my wife and I went to see him because my wife really likes him. He's a juggler and comedian. Because um, sure. you started in D.C.? As a comedian, and yeah. yes. And did, actor, you, yes. did you work with Fat Doctor? Oh, yes. 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 He used to hang out like wet clothes. Yes. And he's a very, very funny guy. Very funny. I never took one of his uh, comedy courses, but... Um, Yes, very funny. Okay, I was, I was just wondering because like, he was, but he's been brought up a couple times. Well, only among so far, say, and this is the part I, because there's, a, I guess, there are a number. Of, I don't know if it's a DC thing or a black DC thing, but Tony Woods and Fat Doctor are like well known. Yes, like, in that, like there. And, yes. and, and I feel like, so maybe I'm just not black enough because I don't know. I didn't, didn't know either one of them. <laughs> back in the day, man, we all started kind of like together, along with uh, Wanda Sykes, Dave Chappelle. Okay, yeah, see, now I, um, I did try to get into one of Fat Doctor's classes, and mm. um, he wasn't taking people at the time. Ah. And the reason why, the reason why uh, no, the reason why I asked about the fact whether well, that you had worked with Fat Doctor is because I I'm curious. I'm curious about people who take classes with other comedians, and when they see other comedians who they took classes with, do they see the technique? You know, like that's like we learned that in class together, and see how they did that. And that's what I was curious about. But you didn't take his class. You just I did it. not. I did work with him. We did some stand together on the same stage. And I still say he was a very, very funny man. Yeah. He's uh yeah. did you make his memorial? Seek that one more time, sorry. Did you oh did you make his memorial? Uh no, I didn't. I'm very sorry about that. I couldn't make it because damn it, I was working at the time. Matter of fact, I think I was working in Richmond and we were doing uh zombies then, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I I had reached out to another comedian to see if they some put a, do a um like a tribute open mic a tribute show them mm -hmm. um oh. but but uh, and they said well, you should do that so no it should it can't be me because first of all I don't know him never met him you know it needs to be somebody who's worked with him you know because uh. if I did it looked like I'm trying to exploit something you know what I'm saying I have no I have like no connection to him I, I just thought it's just that when I think that someone who's Again, has been as influential in comedy yes, scene in the DC that he actually should have, if not his own room, you know, like you go into like some comedy clubs, they have like a room, they call it, you know, or a, a second stage, or even the bathrooms are named after somebody. That yeah, the fat doctor should have something named after him. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, even if it's nothing more than the, the men's room in at the improv or something. I don't know. Like I said, I don't even know enough about him to know where he's been. I just, think that, but I just know that he's been influential in a lot of comedians. Yes. That he should have something, you know, other than people like me going, don't, nope, never heard of him. <laughs> no, Tony Woods. It's funny. The first time, the first time I, I was... Not the first, okay. The first and only time I've had an encounter with Tony Woods, only mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. I was at an open open mic at the, the comedy club in Towson, that's Timonium. I'm not going to say the name, uh, but Timonium, okay. 
uh, it was that open mic, and he's walking in the door, and all the comedians start to like start to like genuflect, you know, and they're all going, "It's Tony Woods! It's Tony Woods! Look, it's Tony Woods! It's Tony Woods! It's Tony Woods!" And I didn't know who Tony Woods was, and I said, "Who's that? Tiger Woods' brother?" Because you know, that's, 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 that's the only Woods I know. No, we, oh, no, no, that's the only Woods I know that would be like that famous, you know. And, and my nephew, and my nephew knows Tiger Woods, so I'm thinking, okay, then yeah, Tiger Woods, you know, that's that's the only connection. What's I hear that? Woods, I'm thinking Tiger, not Woods, and so I'm like, yeah, is that Tiger Woods' brother, and they thought I was making a joke, <laughs> and they laughed like you did, and it's like, no, really, I don't know who this guy is. And they're like, oh man, he 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 just. Uh, he made Dave Chappelle. No, he trained Dave Chappelle. You know, and then other people say, "Well, actually, it was um, he would actually influence Chappelle." Chappelle was trained by Fat Doctor. You know, so I, I don't know. Again, I, I don't even know. I have to look up this Dave Chappelle guy so I can figure out who he is. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. I'm gonna see if I can get him to open for me sometime. I, mean, I hear good things about him. <laughs> yes. Man's brilliant. I, I hear he has a future. I'll see if I can get Dave Chappelle. Oh, yes. Yeah, me. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. I is there it is there anything you want to bring up or uh because I think I'm I've I've gone through every question I had for you. I'm begging your audience to uh, support live comedy, man. Um, That's, yeah, yeah, because our our country, man, we need some uh, loving, yes, some laughter. Because it seems like every day, man, we are bombarded with crazy crap. Yes, Multiple shootings, people trying to overthrow the government. One year, uh, uh, let's see, six year olds carrying guns, which is kind of weird to me. Where did he pull the gun from? His pull up? What the hell, man? Just, Come on. I see my philosophy very simple is that if you want to, if you want to get a handle on the gun problem in the country, make people have to, if you own a gun, you have to have own, you have to have gun insurance. You have to have liability insurance on your gun. And, and people think it's crazy, but. I don't know if you remember when you were a teenager and you first started driving, mm -hmm. but the first thing your parents, the first thing my mother said to me was, don't you make my rates go up. <laughs> that, was, that was like the biggest threat, no matter what I, you know, it's like, no, you are. So my mother was like super, super protective of her rates going up. Yeah. I that. You know? And so if you do the same thing with guns, I can see some guy like you know, it's like, Mom, Dad, I want to take your gun to school. It's like, no, you are not fucking up my rates. Nope. Well, what's your problem? You need to learn to no learn. Use your words. You are not taking the gun to school. Use your words. That's what, use your words. You are not taking my gun to school and making my rates go up. You know how many guns I have to insure in this house. <laughs> that's so. That's to me. That to me. That's the answer. Just have insurance on the guns and the way it works also is if the gun let's say discharges by accident mm -hmm. the insurance can help pay for that person's damages or hospital bills or whatever you know and insurance companies really know how to rate people that's what they do and they i'm sure they love the money i, I you know saying okay you, you got to have I'm sure they can come up with reasonable rates or unreasonable rates. They're insurance companies. I don't know. I don't know if they know the difference between reasonable and unreasonable. But they could bet people, you know, just like they do drivers. As long as they don't be racist about it, you know, as long as you don't go like, well, you are you live in this neighborhood, we're going to charge more. You know, as long as you don't do that. If, they, if they're on up and up on actual safety, they could, prob they could probably come up with rates um, like... Uh, the odds that that person will actually use their gun in an unsafe way. That's why I say, get let, let, let the insurance companies insure the insure the guns. Yeah. I say take all the guns and give everybody paintball guns. That's it. You get mail somebody's paintball in your butts. Bah, 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 bah. 
Hey, you ever you ever do that, PayPal? Uh, yes, that's just kind of fun. It is fun. Stings like a mug. I was about to say it stings, but also stings like a mug. you get if you. I went as a first timer tourist. You know, I was like, you know, just a bunch of friends going like, we need one more guy to uh, fill up our team for our work. You know, it was like one of those, somebody who was like their work thing. It's like they went as a work thing and they needed like a couple more people so they could have like an even number or something or or 10 people. So they had to have like 10 people. So they have like two teams of five or something. And that's okay, sure, I'll go. There were people there with their own guns and yes. camo. Man. I mean, full body regalia. I mean, like, yes, full body. Vests and, oh, yes. This is serious stuff. Yes. I thought, I and I thought Trekkies and cosplay were bad. Not but, these people. No, no, they're serious. It's like, uh, I don't want to say Second Amendment, but uh, if there's like a, yeah. a yeah. If there's a, an art equivalent, you know, like a painting like a Sherwin-Williams uh, amendment or something, that's what they uh, crazy. Yeah, they, it's like they, they get their little fantasies out there. Man, I was like, uh, I'm going to be a general. I'm, I'm mm. uh, why, Before we leave, I would like yeah. to make a prediction yeah. that before the summer of 2023, the Attorney General of Georgia is going to indict Mr. Trump. You heard it here first, folks. Before the summer, Donald Trump is going to get indicted by Fannie Willis. So, do you already have that story written up? You're, you, are you working on punchlines now? Oh, I'm gonna be writing some stuff starting next week. <laughs> Trust me, she ain't playing. No, I, 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 I the, the two people. There are two people that are going. That are like all up in this shit, and they're both black women. Exactly, black girl yeah. magic, man. Yeah, they. It's like they. They carry the work, the weight of the world on their shoulders, mm -hmm. and dispense justice. Exactly, they it's saved like, our country. That's why we got Mr. Biden in the White House, because you know the sisters said, "Let you know we need to save our own country from these crazy people." Most yeah. Republicans, I can say that in my opinion. Most Republicans, man, they just. Well, it's funny because I, I. It's, um, I live out in Carroll County, so most of my local base are mm -hmm. conservative. Of course. And so when Trump became president, and I was still, I mean, before Trump was president, I was making fun of, well, I shouldn't say making fun. I, I, I hate stupidity. And so I will, I mock, I will mock and point out the stupidity no matter who does it. I don't have, I don't, I don't have a, a you know, I don't care. And so when when I didn't agree with a, President Obama, I made it known. When Trump became president, I continued my non-biased, unadulterated attacks on stupidity. But I lost 80% of my fan base. Yeah. Yes. Of course. It's very tribal now. So yes, they could not they the they the ones that holler out calling everybody snowflakes. Were the biggest snowflakes. <laughs> and I just lost eight more fans. <laughs> I only have I only have twelve conservative fans left. I think I just lost eight of them. Sorry, sorry guys. Hey, I, I, sorry. You can't take a joke. Can't help you. Yeah. So, are you having any? If there's any shows you want to promote that's going to come up before February, I will do like a separate promo. Promo. Otherwise, I'm going to edit all the interviews I've done January. I'm editing like this weekend or so and okay. putting them up. Um, Nothing scheduled, my friend. All I'm doing is open mics, as you know. When I have some time and I feel like doing some shit, open mics. Because right now, man, I'm trying to focus in on more acting because now we're starting to gear back up. And I'm trying to get back out there, man. Trying to make some. The Nero's daddy, oh, some, needs of that open, some of that open mic money. <laughs> no, some acting money, man. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I think it's just it would hit the open mics. I'm just trying to get some of that open mic money, man. Uh, that's there's no money in the open mic, you know that. It's just fun. That's all it is to me. Something you to know do. Some, you know something, 
you hear basketball players complaining about them being treated like slaves, mm -hmm. comedians, we're, we're open mic because we're not, you know, okay, it's an exercise, but they're, we're like out there bringing money to the clubs and wannabe clubs, bringing our friends, and we're not getting paid to do it. Uh, I mean, we could tell jokes around the dining room table for free. You know? True that. But we would rather drive an hour, wait around for another two hours to get five minutes of stage time. We are whores. We are comedy whores. I'm just saying, man. Now, see, now, I, 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 I don't do many open mics, but I'll be doing, I'm doing, mainly I'm doing open mics now just to promote the show. So let ah. people know that we're, I'm doing this, you know, and uh, cause to be honest, when I first started looking for people to be on the show, you'd be surprised how many people are going like, you're going to look at some of my early stuff. Yeah. And we'll talk about it. It's like, don't bother me. Yeah. That's what it doesn't bother me. I did it. You know, I did it. I, well, I, I mean, it, it was funny. And yeah. you see the audience thought, man, this was a sounds kind of funny. And then somebody, like, Ooh, I don't want to about it. And, and and the and the main thing is to see what it's more of a growth thing. You know, you can see where you've been, and and younger comics can see that. Because if we're doing our job right, we make mm -hmm. it look really easy. Mm -hmm. And we didn't start off being this good. No, we started off sucking, just like a lot of the kids we see at the open mics. And so, oh, to me, this is like so they can look back and go, "Oh my God." But look where he is now. He's really mm -hmm. good, but he, and it gives them hope and also pointers. I hope. Let me tell you my experience I had just last night, man. Went to a comedy club, one of my favorite places. I went there, waiting around. I was like 19th, uh, like 23 comics, 19th. And I hate to say like the first 12 were mostly like newbies and they stuck up the place. We had an audience for a while, but it stuck up the place so bad. They ran the audience off. So by the time I actually got up on stage, they had two people left. Two oh. people. I'm like, what am I doing? But I still stay having a good time. You Let's know why? That. I'm a comedy whore, as we all are. Well, I am. I mean, there, I, there's like two places I go on a regular basis, and it's because I usually get to do more than you know, seven minutes. Because I'm a storyteller. I don't do the joke thing as much. And so where people, somebody who does jokes, someone says, well, here's five minutes on stage. That's probably, uh, what, 20, 30 jokes, I guess. For me, that's a half a story. Exactly. <laughs> half a story. Half a story. It's the introduction to a story. To a story, exactly. Uh, I was talking, well, last time we were at uh, Slices, right? The last time, the only slices time I was in slices, right. Right. slices right, yes. The only time I've only well, the only time I've been there with you when we were sitting in the back voluntarily, yes. <laughs> and I was telling you about the premise I was working on. Ah, oh. uh, it's fifteen minutes long now. Wow. Yeah, that just the premise is fifteen minutes long. It's it's a beast, and so I've done it and trying to do it in sections. But the thing is, it's so many callbacks. You know, to like the reference, you know, because you're building up on something. It's hard for me to do. You know, I could do like the first five minutes and it stands on its own. But then the middle and the end, it needs like the, the premise. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's harder to do a 15 minute bit when you have like a five minute thing. Exactly. That's all the time you got. Yeah. That's so cool. I. Yeah, so I I now I don't mind it in some regards because that means when I do my next like literally I just finished editing my DVD last night. I'm sorry, not last night. Today I just finished editing it today. I'm proof viewing it tomorrow with my wife. My wife and I were going to put it on the 75 inch screen. Sweet. So I can see that way any mistakes are like really blatant. Oh my god. No. And like, let me fix that. Let me fix that before it goes to YouTube. Now the thing is, looking at a seventy-five inch screen, most people are going to look at it on their phones if they look at it at all. You know, so they're not going to see the things I'm going to see. They're like, and it's like the sound quality. They're listening through earbuds. They're not. I'm like listening through like the, you know, whatever the sound and the sound and fury of 
75 inch television set. Uh, but I literally just finished it today, and uh, and uh, I forgot what I was. The, oh, because what it is is because I don't do a lot of open mics. Most people don't see my material unless they do still see the show. Ah, you know. And then, because I don't want them, I don't, I don't like to open mics out there for the same people who are going to say, "Now, please come see the show." I was like, oh, "Yeah," but we saw the open mic, and not only that, but then they might think, "Is the show going to suck like his open mic did?" <laughs> no, it's like, no, this is the finished product. <laughs> oh. oh man, well. Like I, I appreciate you doing this with me, and sure, uh, it, it let people remind people how they can stalk you on social media. It is my favorite spot, guys. Is Facebook, and it's Frank James F R A N K J A M E S. On any other platform, it's Frank J five six eight. Frank J five six eight. Instagram, Twitter, you know. Tribal, Mastodon? No, nah, well, I was going to say Grinder, but no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 568 on Grinder means something totally different. Yes. Like that. No, I. No. Them's better be dimensions. Them, them's better be girth and length. And, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you better stop. This is a family show. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not a family show. It's uh, at least let's put it this way: my family won't be watching this show. <laughs> no. Man, um, well, it's nice seeing you as always, GD. Yeah. Man. You know, I see you on stage. I see you around town. You know that. I'm running to you, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah. It's funny. The last time I talked, well, not the last time I did. But we were talking. You were encouraging me at least to take a look at doing uh, extra work. Yes. And, and as soon as you told me that, my car broke down. And my car was like broken down for three months because of oh, well, wow. COVID didn't break it down. It took three months for them to find to get parts because there's a shortage. Ah. And I had to wind up getting like a used part rebuilt. I had that problem. Uh, yeah. It took about two weeks to get one little part for the car. I was like, two weeks? Yeah. That was, yeah. but now, man. But it gave me time to think about it because as much as I would like, the to be an extra in the movie, mm -hmm. it, I, I, I've already told you this, I'm a terrible actor. I'm good on stage as a comedian. My, my wife's voice says, But you're very good. You got to. I said, First of all, I, I'm i telling my story, so I don't, I'm not memorizing a lot of stuff. I said, And I, I, I give my words more credence than other people's words. So, a director would say to me, You have one line. Okay, you're an extra. You walk in. And they say your name and you correct them. That's it. They'll say, um, Master Don, and you say, Mr. Don. Okay, that's it. All you say is Mr. Don, and then you walk out. And I'm like, but wouldn't it be funny if I said, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> Mr. Don, and walk out? What if I, no, what if you just come in and say, Mr. Don, get your cup of coffee and leave? You need to pay for it? Well, yes, you got to pay for it. Okay. No, you've already paid for it. You paid for it over there. You just get your coffee and you leave. Do you want me to look back at the, at the barista? Like, good job? No! You just get, you know. I'd be, I'd be fired as an extra. That they would take the next person with dreads. Yeah, man. You have to take directions, my friend. Yeah, they kind of particular about that yeah see now i'm i'm I, my brain doesn't work like that my brain is like you know it really be funny <laughs> this is i'm sorry this is a documentary mr fenderson <laughs> this is a documentary this is we're this is this is emmett general i said yeah but you know it really funny <laughs> this, this, is a, this is a documentary about martin luther king's assassination okay you're you're the you're the you're you're in the back window Exactly. Watch, okay? You don't have any lines except for you don't really be funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Love you, man. If I pull out a cell phone. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. They would kick you off set. 1968. Not play that. That's one of the cardinal rules. No cell phones on set. Nobody. They would quickly (laughs) kick your ass off for that. Zip. Yeah, yeah. It, you gotta keep their classified information. They're they're, they're not the they're yeah. not the government. You can't take home classified information. No, man. I'm telling you, man. My granddaughter's diary is more secret than the shit they've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got secret documents, except for my boy Obama. He had no, no. secret documents. See, a man had it right, time, man. Always on it. Always. I, actually, I'm going to bet with Michelle to make sure he did it right. Yeah. So, no, well, you're not you are not dragging my name through the mud. <laughs> no. No. But I have one fine sister, though, man. Michelle, oh, my God. She's been in the finest, you know, first ladies I've seen in a long time. You know what I'm saying? What about, what, what about Rice? She was the first. She was Bush's first lady. Ah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice, Condoleezza Rice. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, she was. She was, she was Bush's more, first lady. She's more a strict and straight. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just teasing. Uh, she's more like a fun girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know oh man. Uh, well, I appreciate you doing this with me, man. It's. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a heads up when we. Uh, Please do. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll see you around. Absolutely, my friend. I'll see you, man. Love you. Stay All right, out of trouble, okay? All right, take care. Peace with you, my friend. All right. All right. Okay. That time I skipped. Or did you did you did you did you did you quit after two? No, I did not. Oh. I did not quit after two. Oh man, this is gonna be horrible, man. Okay, because that time maybe um I should take it up. Um is that an option? If I do, the dogs will go really wild on me. I'm just saying. What's wild? Yes, let's I mean, try that. Maybe it'd be a better like- connection, so Okay. They all just be jumping around acting stupid. Okay. Stay there. I'm gonna try to go upstairs. Stay there. Okay. Maybe that'll I'll, work. I'll... Just hold on, hold on a sec. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Still moving. Okay, still moving, still moving. Hey guys, could you be quiet, please? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's try this. Any better connection? Well, your face looks better, and uh, it seems to be. Yeah, you're moving better. Yeah, everything oh. is. Yeah, good. It looks better. Let's give it a shot. Okay, let me. Give me one sec. Let me check one thing. Sure. No, it's even worse than I think. Okay. I am back. Oh, cool. So how, how, how you doing, man? Oh, fine, fine, great. And you? Good, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm go- going to give you a little bit, a little bit of um, housekeeping stuff real quick. Sure. You're professional, so you understand. Um, yes, of course. There's always housekeeping. All right. All right. Since this is not going out live, I record it and I edit it down. And okay. no matter how long we talk, it'll be. It's like if we, if it 
becomes like two 30 minute segments is two 30 minute segments. It doesn't matter. You know, we just go with the flow, but so we're not worrying about going about live, but if there's anything you say that you want to take back, let me know so I can edit it out. I don't, I'm not interested in like the gotcha stuff that, you know, can get you in trouble with your agent you or, too. or Gee, Teresa. Dude. You know, I'm an open book, my friend. Come on now. Oh, I'm an open book too, but some pages should be torn out. <laughs> it's like, I don't have any skeletons in my closet. I just have bones. <laughs> you put the, <laughs> it's just bones. A skeleton is assembled. Bones is just the remnants of a skeleton. So, <laughs> That's funny. So uh, I will. So like I said, then you need to take back. Even if it's something you say inadvertently, you know, just you want to say, I'll, you know, I want to say that, but not with those words. I shouldn't have said, I shouldn't have. You know. I follow you. Okay. Just let me know and I can edit it out in post. Um, now, what I usually do. Okay, is I will actually I shoot the ending before I before I actually do the show, and that's just in case we run out of time, we have the ending. And basically, the ending is you letting people know how they can um, stalk you on social media. You know where they can find you, websites or whatever. Yes. Um, now, uh, I will. Let's see. Oh, your your segment your. The bit, the the clip, the yeah, the set that you sent me is roughly just about five minutes long. Yeah. So it's divided up into two segments. Okay. You know, and that way we can like look at one sec, one little section if you want, and then we can talk, you know, talk about that or whatever comes a bit, and then we'll look at the second half, you know, a little bit later. Okay. Um, okay. Now, while the clip is playing, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> they, don't, they, they can't see you. They can't hear you. The only Boy, thing the audience will see is that is the clip. Boy, so. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. All right. Well, that's uh, so. Let me do this real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want me to do you now? Because most people call most people refer to you as Frankie. Does it matter to you if it's Frankie or Frank? Because I don't even know what I call you until I became self-conscious today. I'm like, what do I call him? I don't know what I call him. Do I call him Frankie or Frank? I don't know. All my friends call me Frankie because they know me by that stage name. Oh, okay. Then that's probably what you I call you then. I, you know, you know how it is you get self-conscious? Like, like someone says, walk for me. Like, I don't know how to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Say, no, just walk for me. I don't know. How, how do I walk? So. Actually, that's an interesting story why I'm actually using that name, but we can talk about that later. Okay, that's cool, because I will, I will ask that, too. I was going to ask you, yeah. Um, why did you say that name? Good, good question, yeah. actually. Now, uh, let's see here. So, I'm going to do the ending now. Uh, let's see. Okay. Two, one. Uh, Frankie, I want to thank you for joining us with me, uh, putting yourself out there like that. If you don't mind... One more yes. time, just reminding people how they can stalk you on social media, where they can find you, you know, okay. acquire your services. Well, I always post on Facebook, and you can find me at Frank James, F R A N K J A M E S. But all other platforms, it's Frank, F R A N K J, the number is 568, Frank J 568 on Twitter, you know, anything like that, use that. But I'll tell you, GD, I'm an old guy. I'm old school. I love Facebook. So I post a lot of stuff on Facebook, what I'm doing, where I'm going, and even about the, the things I'm doing with my acting career. And back to you. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, uh, everybody. I'm glad. You, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, thank you for watching Dunway Past Funny. Yes. Cool. Love you, man. All right. Now, I'm going to hit the theme which is roughly 27 seconds long. Okay. And so that I'll, I'll come on that and I will introduce you. All right. Boom, check. Let me, let me <laughs> get this. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. 